Is this weather awesome? Yay. Yeah. Oh. Um, just a couple announcements. Uh, <clears throat> Tuesday night. You don't want to miss Tuesday night. As we dig into um, faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. And uh, Graham uh, had a great word on, on so Tuesday. So I mean, man. Uh, and he's going to take it even deeper this Good. Tuesday. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, so that's Tuesday evening at uh, uh, 7 o'clock uh, at 125 Blackburn Drive or, of course, on Zoom. And, uh, and so thank you, Graham, for taking that on. And, and thank you for what you released on Tuesday. Um, I know uh, we had a conversation afterwards uh, uh, when, uh, you know, those that were, had come to the house. And, and, uh, and yeah, they, 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 all of them were uh, are touched by what you had to share. And, and uh, I'm looking forward to expecting Yes. Um, great things that are going to come forward, um, you know, this Tuesday for each of us, yes. right? For for each of us that that we can grow in in, in our faith, we can grow in His faith, and uh, and we can step into a new dimension. Say, I'm going to step into a new dimension of faith. Amen. And uh, so that's this Tuesday, and then next Sunday is Pentecost, and uh, and so. Uh, Lord willing, uh, I'll have a, 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 a Pentecost message, um, a word. I, I believe God started to show me the word uh, last night. And uh, and so um, I thank the Lord that he's going to unpackage that word um, and uh, uh, be ready to come expecting um, to to receive. I mean, we, we need to come expecting all the time, but, but, um, but I really believe that that, that, that God's going to um, um, pour something out this this coming Sunday um, at Pentecost that that's going to expand you. Uh, say it's going to expand me, right? and uh, um, you know I believe it's going to expand the way you think. It's going to expand the way you see. Um, and uh, so I'm going to that's what I'm believing for. Um, so so that's next Sunday, and. Uh, um, here at four o'clock, those that are watching online, we start at four o'clock, and uh, we welcome those that are watching online, and and, uh, and 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 those that are watching online. If you could do us a favor, and uh, if you if, if you haven't done this already, is go to YouTube, look up Victory Revival Center, and uh, and subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. Uh, we need fifty uh, viewers. Um, and once we do, then we can go live stream on YouTube uh, instead of live streaming on, on Facebook. I mean, we'll still do the Facebook thing, but it'll, it'll live stream from you, YouTube into Facebook at the same time. And, uh, um, and that's the only way we can do it. For, and, and we have some people that, that aren't on Facebook that, that need to, to uh, have access. So, um, so if you haven't done that, those who watch online, those that are here, please do so. Uh, and uh, I think I think right now there's 46 or 47, so we just need a couple, mm -hmm. uh, a couple more, and then uh, the uh, uh, the camera will allow us, the program will allow us to live stream onto YouTube, and uh, and also it'll save us a little bit of work because we have to we have to actually um, edit the message down and, uh, and and to put it onto the different streams, and this way we won't have to do that. And just automatically uh, get uploaded onto YouTube and uh, as well as Facebook. So we don't have to go through and try to figure it out, edit it out, that kind of thing. So that'll help us in the long run as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have your Bibles there, uh, turn with me to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And uh, this, mor or this morning, <laughs> uh, this evening, I want to I wanna, um, kind of uh, do a little bit of a recap of the word God gave us at the beginning of the year. Um, and, uh, and step into, um, uh, I've kind of titled this, Dependent Upon the Face of God. Dependent on the face of God. How many know we need to become more dependent on His face? Yes. Yes. Right? And, uh, and I want to kind of dive into this uh, tonight, and then, and then uh, in, uh, in a few weeks we'll dig back into it again. Um, but... Um, but everybody say, I need, I need to become dependent upon the face of God. You know, it's a challenge sometimes when we live in a culture that, that has become so independent. 
We live in a society, we live in a culture in North America that really uh, uh, revolves around independence, right? We, we have, we have this, this, this mindset, uh, you know, even in the church, we have this mindset of independence. You know, I'm, you know we, we have this mindset, well, I, I can be self-sufficient on my own. I, I, I can, you know, and, and, and I've had this. You know, I remember one time, you know, we, we were believing to, to uh, or I was believing, I don't know about Halston, but I was believing to, to become self-sufficient where we could have all of our own groceries, we could have all of our own stuff, mm-hmm. right? But how many know self-sufficiency, mm-hmm. right? If, 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 if we become self-sufficient, now I understand the direction that God, you know, He, he wants to develop some of this, but, but the reality is, is that I cannot become self-sufficient I need dependency upon Him. In other words, no matter how much you grow, no matter how much you, you save, the more you and I save and the more we, 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 we have, the less dependent we can become on Him. Right? So, so, so even as, as we grow in prosperity in every dimension of our life, we have to stay completely dependent upon Him. That, that, that my savings account, my, 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 my investments, my RSPs, whatever it is that you have, is not your, is not your lifeline, right? God's your lifeline, and those are, a, are, are just being a good steward of what God's given you so that you're planning ahead. But, but if everything fell through, God's your source, Right? He's still your source whether you have it or whether you don't. But you got to re- remember that you got to be dependent upon Him, not on the size of your account. Not on, the, not on the prosperity that God has given you. Our dependency must be completely on Him. Mm-hmm. Say completely on Him. Mm-hmm. Right? And so, so, um, so let me read the, the text here. And then I'm going I'm to read the, the prophetic word that God gave us. Uh, actually, I'll just read the prophetic word first. This is the word God gave us. I see tectonic shifts taking place within you. For I declare over you, this is a year and a season of supernatural activity. Some of the supernatural activity that will take place will shift you and cause you to move in ways you have never moved before. I say, welcome to the shift. Welcome to the shift as you welcome in the shift you will begin to move like you've never moved before. And you will see that I am moving like I have never moved before in the realm of supernatural activity. But I say to you, the realm of supernatural activity will cause you to access things like you've never accessed before. You will access new realms, new realms for your spirit like you've never tapped into before. There will be shifting shadows. And as the shifting shadows take place, you will begin to discover the shadows of my wings rather than the shadows of darkness. For your focus will be upon me. So I say welcome to a new shift of supernatural activity. Set your gaze. Set your heart. Set your mind on me. And in the shift, there will be movement. Everybody say movement. In the movement, there will be accesses, doors, of access that you have never accessed before in me and through me. But know these doors are not just for you that are going to open, but you're going to be able to then cause a people to enter into supernatural activity that they weren't able to before in the previous season, for they were paralyzed. And I want to say that out of the paralyzing, you will find new depths of walking new depths of abilities, new depths of movement. For my children, my children, welcome to a new season of supernatural activity. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on me. Set your gaze on me. For there will be counterfeit shifts. But if you set your gaze on me, you will know the shifts that I am doing. And your focus will be on the shifts that I am doing and not on the counterfeit shifts. So set your gaze on me, set your gaze on me. Everybody say shift. That's the word of the Lord. That's what the Lord gave us. It's what he gave me as we stepped into the new Hebrew calendar year back in September last year, 5784, which we're presently in. Mm -hmm. 
And, uh, and then I, I, I decreed it again uh, on January um, uh, 1st, and I'm decreeing this again for us to get a, a deeper revelation that there are shifts taking place, right? There are shifts taking place in the way that you think. There are shifts taking place in the way that you see things. There are shifts taking place in the way that, that, uh, that you and I are even moving and worshiping him. See, there's a new shift. All right. And, uh, and shift uh, means a change or a transfer of direction. From one direction to another. In other words, he's, he's shifting you and he's shifting me out of situations and into his realities. Okay? Shifting us out of situations and circumstances and shifting us into his realities. Now, now that doesn't mean that the situation is gone. What it means is that he's shifting you to see and to operate from outside of the circumstance so that it shifts the circumstance. Yes, yes. See, far too often we try to get out of situations rather than walking through it with the reality of what he says. Right? That's that say say that's where I'm going. Right? That's that's where that's where that's where he's taken me. Right? And uh, so now let's look at Mark chapter two. Mark chapter two, starting in verse one. It says, and again he entered Capernaum. After some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. So he's in the house. Uh, see, 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 he, he is in the house. Uh, you know, put your hand on your belly for a moment. Say, so he's in my house. Right? See, see, he's in me. Say, he's in me. Right? Christ is in me. Right? See, see, we need a deeper revelation of Christ in us. Right? I don't know you, but I need a deeper revelation of Christ in me. Right? Christ is in me. But how many know just because Christ is in me doesn't mean I'm living from the fullness of Christ in me? Right? And, and, and this is the shift. God's shifting you and I to live from a, a revelation of Christ in me so that we walk in his reality in the midst of our situations. Right? So he's in the house. Yes. Now immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four. Everybody say by four. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof. See, there's things getting uncovered Supernaturally. Right? Say, 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 there's supernatural things that are going to uncover some stuff so I can access in Christ. Mm. All right? And, uh, and so they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, everybody say breakthrough. Breakthrough. Right? They let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. And when Jesus saw their faith, yes. he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Mm. Another way to say it is rise up and walk. Mm. Come out of paralysis. Mm -hmm. Right? I believe with all my heart, God is calling us out of paralysis. Areas that we could not move in before, areas that we, we had no movement or ability to move, he's calling you out. Say, he's calling me out. Hallelujah. But, but, but see, see, we need to recognize that the four, everybody say the four. The four here are four men picked up as men. But, but prophetically, God began to show me that these four represent the four living creatures. Mm. Which represent the four faces of God. All right? And, and, and you know, I, how many love God? Right? I, you know, it amazes me when God creates, when God created some of the creatures that he created, it amazes me that he created them with an aspect of who he is. 
And, and, and these four living creatures, uh, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but, but let me say this. These four living creatures each had four faces. Mm. Right? Isn't that, isn't that wild? Like, 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 it's wild. <laughs> right? And they had like eyes, not just on their faces, but all over them. Right? And, and, you know, I began to discover something that, that, that God's eyes are all over. <laughs> right? Say, say, they're all over. Right? Uh, and, 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 and so, you know, everybody say the face of God. Right? So, so I, you know, the Lord gave me this title, you know, that we need to become more dependent on the face of God. And these four represent the face of God. And there's divine activity. That is going to lift you up and cause you and I to come higher so we can go deeper. See, they had to raise this paralytic up higher. Now, now <laughs> the story, in the story, the paralytic is the one that got healed. The Bible says he preached to them. And, 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 and people flocked and, and, and there was no room. And I hear the Lord say that there are many that come to hear the word, but not all receive what he wants to release. <clears throat> and I want to suggest to you that God is raising you up to receive. It's not just, you know, oh yeah, I'm just going to wait and receive. No, he's raising you up to receive, right? He's saying, listen, you've been hungry, you've been thirsty, and I'm going to raise you up, <laughs> right? I'm going to raise you up, and as I raise you up, I'm going to begin to break through those things that have become weaved in your life that have prevented you from moving the way I've called you to move. Hallelujah. Right? This is what he's doing. It's amazing what you were saying. The situation may be the same, but it's like when Jesus came after he rose again, he came back to his disciples. The wall was in front of him. The situation was in front of them. It was a wall. Yep. But he walked right through it. Yep. Mm. Yep. So the situation is the same. But like Jesus walked through right through the wall, yep. we just walked through it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Watch this. They, because <laughs> you raise a very valid point, mm. they were expecting Jesus mm -hmm. to function and operate the way he used to function. <laughs> Yeah. And now Jesus is functioning in a dimension. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say, Jesus, Jesus is going to function in a dimension yeah. that is different that is than anything previous to this. Say, I got to be open. We have to be open for God to move. We got to be open to recognize that Jesus doesn't want to move the way he did yesterday. He doesn't want to move the way he did last year. He wants to move differently. And, and we've got to allow him to move differently so that we can be raised up and go deeper in him. Right? Say, 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 I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Right? All right. Now, so <laughs> the door's blocked. The, there's, there's no way to get in. And these four men Find a way. I want to say, Lord, the Lord, through his face, is finding a way for you. He's finding a way for you. Say, he's finding a way for me. It's different. And, and, and I, have been, I have been paralyzed in areas of my life. That he wants to raise up. And so he's shifting us. And he's shifting us. Right? So these four 
living creatures are going to shift you and I into a new dimension of Jesus. All right? Into a new dimension of Jesus. And, and all we got to do is let them. All right? And we're going to see what that looks like and what that means uh, in, in, in a little bit. See, tradition, ways of thinking, belief systems in each of our lives have kind of gotten woven in. Yes. Right? Come on, anybody? Yes. Right? You know, that have been woven in yes. due to circumstances of our life and situations that we have begun to believe lies and God wants to break through the lies Amen. so that we get set free yeah. and move like we've never moved before. Lord, mm. Lord. we've always done it this way. God. Yeah. Yeah, right? And, 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 and you know, we, we often joke about that, right? And we say those things, but, but how much of our life actually gets modeled in that perspective? Right? It's so true, right? How much of our life actually becomes modeled? Well, I've always done it this way. And when God tries to bring a shift, we, we, we balk at it, right? Yep. Uh, yep. Exactly. And 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 and, and it's a faith okay. is arising okay. to live in this. Right? It's his faith. See his faith. Now the paralytic in this story represents you and I. In areas of our life that we have had the inability to move in the word and in the spirit in different areas of our life. In other words, there's been inactivity. Yeah. Oh, yes. All right? Yeah. Anybody recognize some areas of inactivity? Yeah. Right? How many, know, how many know Adam, you know, lived out of a realm of inactivity? Mm-hmm. Right? When temptation had showed up. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and he's living out of this realm of inactivity because how many know he had the ability to shut it down? Right? And he chose to be inactive. In other words, he chose to live out of a paralytic state. And there are areas of your life and my life that God's saying, listen, you've been paralyzed and I want to set you free. I want to cause a movement that you've never moved in before. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And uh, how many are, 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 are feeling it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Just as the paralytic needed the help of the four men, we need the help of the four faces of God. All right? The number four in Hebrew is the letter Dalit. And it, it, it's interesting because this letter is actually a letter of dependency. Just discovered that this week. That this letter is a letter of dependency. Let, let me, let me kind, of, kind of walk this out. One, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Okay? That was deep. Now watch, watch. I know, it's going to get deeper. <laughs> yeah. Father, mm-hmm. Son, mm-hmm. Holy Spirit, right. you. <laughs> Right? Yes. Which means the fourth. <laughs> yes. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you got to be dependent on the first three. Yes. Because if you and I are dependent on the first three mm-hmm. as the fourth, we'll walk out the rest of the alphabet <laughs> with him. Yeah. Say three yeah. plus one yeah. equals four. Four. I could take this in so many different directions. Uh, next, we're going to do the curse of writing, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me, let, me, let me see this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There are Hebrew names. Anybody remember their Hebrew names? Azariah, 
Hananiah. No. Just forget the third. Oh, top of my head. But their three names speak of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three went into the fire. Prophetically speaking, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit went into the <laughs> went into the fire, and a fourth came. In other words, in the midst of your trial, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are in the midst of the trial. And they're making you and forming you and me into their image and likeness so that we walk as a son of God. We've got to get outside of us and recognize that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are with us every moment of our day. And they are forming us in the midst of the fire, in the midst of the trial, into a son of God. Hallelujah. Right? In other words, it's a picture of, of supernatural activity manifesting in the midst of the fire. It wasn't just that Jesus showed up. It was that, that, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had become one as a son. <laughs> I'll preach that in another day, but mm. Mm. say four, four is a letter of dependency. It also speaks of humility or humbleness. And in picture form, it's the, in the form of a tent door. And what's fascinating to me is that Jesus, our greatest example, was completely dependent upon the Father and the Holy Spirit. So, as a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are working on us, does that mean as in with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he uses the ways of the world to bring us uh, to where we ought to be? Yeah. So like them, we won't even smell like the world. That's and right. the world, tribulations and problems not come against us. Mm -hmm. no. It yeah. won't hurt us. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Do you know that, I, I, I'm gonna preach on, I'll preach on that when I get back from our trip, but, but yeah, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just wait on that, okay? Because cause, cause there's so much. Mm. You know, there's so much, and, and if we get a revelation mm -hmm. of, of, of that their hair did not singe, mm. right? Mm -hmm. They didn't even feel the fire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have got to get outside of the mode mm -hmm. of feeling the fire. Mm -hmm. mm. That's another yes. question. Now, this is a year to discover a greater dependency on the Trinity in our lives. Say the Lord is looking for greater dependency on Him. Go with me to Revelation 4. Revelation 4. Pastor Hananiah, Michelle, Azariah. Yeah, Michelle, that's it. Yep. Thank you. Revelation chapter 4, starting in verse 6. It says, Before the throne there was a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature like a calf or an ox. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. Say the eyes of the Lord are greater than we think. 
Now, go over to Ezekiel. Ezekiel seems, sees a similar vision to John. Very closely related. Starting in verse 4, Ezekiel 1. Starting in verse 4, it says, Then I looked, and behold, a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with raging fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of the mist like the color of amber, out of the mist of the fire. Also from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces. And each one had four wings. Their legs were straight. And the soles of their feet were like soles of calves' feet. They sparkled like the color of burnished bronze. The hands of a man were under their wings on their four sides. And each of the four had faces and wings. And their wings touched one another. And, and the creatures did not turn when they went. But each one went straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each had the four, each of the four had the face of a lion. On the right side, each of, each of the four had the face of an ox. And on the left side, at, uh, and, and each of the four had the face of an eagle. Thus their faces, um, thus were their faces, and their wings stretched upward. Two wings on, of each one touched one another, and two covered their bodies. And each one went straight forward, and they went wherever the Spirit wanted them to go. And they did not turn when they went. I want to suggest to you that these four have been released into your life and my life. Because the Spirit of the Lord wants them to go and begin to raise us up into a deeper level in Him. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right? So, so <laughs> each of the four living creatures had four faces. The face of an ox, the face of an eagle, the face of a man, and the face of a lion. Say, God wants me to look into his face and become intimately Involved with his face. Now tonight I want to deal with one face. Everybody say one face. Say the ox. There's so much I could teach on this, but in Hebrew, the first letter is the olive, which was in the form of an ox head. And, 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 and how many know an ox speaks of strength and endurance? All right? But here's the interesting picture here. The olive being the face or the head of an ox actually means the father. All right? So how many know the father is a symbol of strength? Nothing can defeat Father God. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Right? It doesn't matter what comes against him. Nothing can defeat him. He's an ox. And he's full of strength. <laughs> and he's looking for you and I to look into that aspect of his face. Yes. <laughs> that we begin to see his strength. We begin to see his endurance, uh, his, abil his ability to endure in the midst of trial, in the midst of situations, in the midst of circumstances. If we'll just look at his face, we'll have the ability to endure. So I got to look at his face. Right? And, and so the ox, like I said, is a symbol of strength, of leadership. And an ox can pull a mighty load. You know, over the years, I was sharing with, with, with Allison, when I was a policeman, I learned, or, and God showed me, how to carry a load. Okay? I mean, as a policeman, I, I had power and I had authority. And, 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 and 
and when I was in policing, it was we were crazy busy. Uh, first first few years we weren't, but then it just got like crazy, and it's even crazier now, mm -hmm. right? But but it got so crazy that that I I I would go to probably on an average of at every shift, an average of fifteen to seventeen calls, mm -hmm. and out of those calls, probably about half of them I had to spend time investigating. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plus, I was in court on my days during the, my day shift, so I didn't have time to investigate during the day. I had to investigate at night. And so I would have a list of, of assignments mm -hmm. that was like, yay all. Right? And God began to develop me to a place of how to carry that load, not on my own, mm -hmm. but with Him. Mm -hmm. To be able to carry that load so I didn't succumb to the heavy load. Mm -hmm. And what's happened in the church is that we have succumbed to heavy loads because we have not looked into the face of God and allowed Him to carry the load. And, and He showed me that. And so then when I came into ministry and, 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 and became a pastor, and, and you know, and, and I still to this day, people go, well, you know, isn't being a pastor like, 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 like heavy load? Mm. Well, I've learned how to walk in the heavy load and allow Him to carry it. Mm -hmm. It's not mine to carry. Mm. It's his. I'm just the one that's to shepherd and, and to, to, to um, look after, but he carries the load. And for far too long, the church, I mean, if you, if you look at the stats, 1,500 pastors leave the ministry because they're burnt out every month in North America. Every month. Because, because they've allowed people to put on them a load they were never called to carry. And for far too long, people get offended because, well, pastor didn't do this and pastor didn't do that. Listen, you got to get the word for yourself, right? And, and, and just because pastor didn't do this, don't put it on the pastor. And what's happened is, is pastors get stressed and burnt out because they've allowed the needs of the people to become their load and not his load. Right? I'm not called to carry your load. Amen. I'm not called to carry my own load. Right? You're not called to carry your load. He's called to do it. That's why I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go there. When two ox are yoked together, there's more power. It's like the sun is greater than the two individual yes. something there. Mm -hmm. Here's here's the challenge. We don't like being yoked. <laughs> <laughs> and so so we, let me kind of paint the picture. When 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 a farmer, you know, how many know he's got an ox that, that knows how to carry a load, right? And he'll stick an ox beside that ox. To teach that ox how to carry the load. Right? And so that, that ox gets yoked with the ox that knows what he's doing. Right? And so, so think about it. As a baby ox, what, what happens? A baby ox wants to do its own thing. Right? Come on. How many of us want to do our own thing? Right? And so, so we kind of get a little bit bucky. Right? And so what they did in ancient times is they would stick this, this, this beam behind and it would have little, little spikes in it. So that when the ox tried to kick, when the baby ox tried to kick its way out, it would hit those things and it would cause them to recognize you got to submit. Yeah. Right? And this is what they did, right? And, so, and so, so what would take place over a period of time, the ox, the, the young ox would begin to recognize Every time I try to kick at it, I get a little sting. Right? In other words, it wasn't an evil sting. It was, it was to try to get the, the young ox to a place that it would just, because, because how many of the farmer wanted to go straight, not this way and that way? Right? God wants you and I to go straight. And, 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 and he doesn't want us to go to the left or to the right. He wants us to go straight with him. And he wants us to stay yoked with him. But, he can't get us to go straight if we keep bucking. Right? And so I gotta submit. Everybody, I gotta submit. Say the ox can carry a mighty load. 
right? Let me, let, me, let me say this another way. The Aleph, the first letter of Hebrew alphabet, actually can mean, in Hebrew understanding, that the father is the strong leader of the house. Mm. How many know Jesus didn't balk at the father? Mm. He submitted in perfect obedience. And out of his submission of perfect obedience, we now can submit. Okay? So, the olive displays in the ox the power of God to break through the barriers of our lives, to bring our destiny in him to full completion. If we allow him. But it, how many of God will let you carry the load if you want to carry it? Because he knows, eventually, you're going to say, I give up. I give up. <laughs> right? And, and, and to be honest with you, we all need to get to that place. Right? How, be honest now. How many like to carry their own load? Right? Come on. Right? It's a yes and a no, right? I mean, we don't like it, but we, we do it, right? And, uh, and so, so, I mean, the ox is the burden bearer that carries the responsibility to care for us and to carry the weight of our issues, our situations, and circumstances. How many of us as believers are walking around carrying burdens, mm. carrying around weights mm. that have paralyzed us from moving and advancing forward? Mm. Mm. That just reminded me of when Jesus met Saul, who became Paul. Yep. He said, it is hard for you to kick against the pricks. Goes. At the goes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Because what was God doing? He, right. God wanted him yoked, but he was kicking. Right? Right? Because how many know Paul knew the scriptures? No. I mean, he was taught by the best of the best. Yeah. The problem is he had become so religious yeah. mm -hmm. that he thought he was doing the right thing, but he wasn't. Mm. Right? And he was, he was kicking. He was bucking. Right? Now, go with me to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you good? Yeah. All right. And, uh, you know, say, 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 say this. My pastor, My pastor loves me. he loves me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> right. I love you. All right. <laughs> and God loves you. But sometimes we need a little kick. <laughs> right. And, uh, and, and this is one of them. This is, this is. <laughs> It's just one of them because, because it's so easy for us to pick up and carry our own load mm -hmm. and be independent. Mm -hmm. All right? And God says, no, that's not what I want for you. I didn't design you to be independent and carry your own load. I designed you to be yoked with me so that I carry the load, the weight of the load. You're just yoked to me. But I carry the weight of the load. Say, I'm yoked to him, but he carries the load. Right? Say, he carries the load. Right? Now, Hebrews 12, look at this. The Apostle Paul writes this. I believe it was the Apostle Paul that wrote the book of Hebrews. So, the Apostle Paul says this. He says, verse 1 in chapter 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses... Lay aside, let us lay aside every weight and, and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with the endurance, the race that is set before us. Notice the Apostle Paul says, let us lay aside Every weight. You know, I should have brought it and I forgot. I did this many years ago. I brought a weight. Well, I preached a different, different kind of concept of this, but but 
I, I, I brought a 10 pound weight and a 25 pound weight. And I, and, I, and I gave it to people and I said, okay, I want you to walk around the church with this weight. And by the time they got halfway around, oh man, this is heavy. Right? And, and, and a few people couldn't even do it. And yet, we carry that weight. Many of us are carrying that kind of weight. And it's not ours to carry. And so what happens is, when you, when you carry weight, I remember the woman that was hunchback. Right? She's hunched down. Why? Because she's carrying too much weight. Right? When you start to carry too much weight, you begin to hunch over. And, and eventually, it will cause a paralysis in certain dimensions of your muscles. Right? And we need, uh, you know, and so that's why the four and the ox bearer wants to lift, if you're willing to give it, lift your heavy burden. Tonight. Everybody say tonight. Right? Not tomorrow. Tonight. All right? Okay, now. So he says, so the apostle says, says lay aside every weight. Now listen to this. The word lay aside is so powerful. It's taken from the Greek word apothemai. Uh, 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 probably not even saying that right. And it's a compound of the words apo and tithemi. And the word apo means away. And the word tithemi means to place or to lay something down. And when these two words are compounded together, it gives a picture of someone who is laying something down while at the same time is pushing it far away from himself. In other words, what the Apostle Paul is saying, don't just lay it down, but push it as far as away from you as you possibly can. In other words, push it to Jesus. Right? Push it to Jesus and let him carry it. Because it's his role. Say, it's his role. It's his role. Right? The Sanhedrin and some of the movies say, away with him. Yep. Same parallel. Yep, same concept. Push him away. Yep, push him away. Yep. Okay. Now. Thus, this word implies a deliberate decision to make a permanent change of attitude and behavior. Mm -hmm. So to let uh, lay aside every weight means to give it to Jesus mm -hmm. and get as far away from that weight. <laughs> right? That's what it means. Now, <laughs> see every weight, not just some, not just a little bit. Yeah, but Lord, I like carrying this one. You know, this one gives me comfort. Come on. There are weights that we, we, we think are comfort to us. Right? You know, have you ever met someone, you know, that, that, that every, everything in their life has fallen apart and they don't want to give it away because they become so accustomed to it, it has become their friend. Okay? And they don't want to give it away. But how many? It's a weight. Yeah. Right? The word weight, listen to this. The word weight here means a mass as bending or bulging by its load and also speaks of burdens and hindrances. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the Apostle Paul's not just saying, okay, you know, just, you know, lay aside, you know, that little weight. You know, that little hindrance. No, he's saying, listen, lay aside every weight, every hindrance, every obstacle, and everything that is bulging at the seams. Right? And, 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 and preventing you from being able to advance and move forward in the direction God wants you to go. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, go with me to Matthew 11. Matthew 11.
You know, burdens can be anything. They can be fears. They can be stressors. They can be anxieties. They can be they can be trials. They can be situations. They can be they can be um, I mean even sin related. They can be um, um, people that you've tried to carry. You know, they, they, it could be anything and everything. Mm. All right? And so look at this, Matthew chapter 11. Verse 29. Actually, let's go to verse 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Say, come to me. The word come means this. It means to follow and join yourself to me. Okay? So join yourself to me, all who labor, all who are toiling, troubled, weary, lamenting, in grief, in mourning, or feel cut down, fatigued, that's what that word labor means. Let me say it again. Toiling, troubled, weary, lamenting, in grief, mourning, or been cut down, fatigued. And heavy laden means loaded up, overburdened, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, and, and anxiety, and you're carrying it. We were never designed to carry any burden. That was the Lord's will. And is the Lord's role. Okay? Now, there are three dimensions of being yoked. Okay? And if we get the first one, the last two will automatically follow. Okay? If we understand the first dimension of being yoked, the other two will follow. And will live in a place of what Jesus said. My yoke is easy. easy. Mm. The first yoke or dimension of being yoked to God is submission. Mm. Everybody say submission. It's not a word that people like to hear. Right? It's not a word that, that any of us really like to hear because we want to be independent. Dependency requires submission. And submission means to come under the mission of. In other words, when we submit, we're coming under the mission of Christ. So Jesus, what this, this is amazes me. Jesus perfectly submitted. And because of his perfect submission, all we got to do is come under his perfect submission. In other words, you can't you can't even we can't even come into submission outside of his perfect submission. <laughs> right? I mean, we need help. 
<laughs> right? <laughs> right? Amen. You know, and he recognizes Amen. that, that we need help. Right? And, 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 and so, so say he's taking me higher. Amen. Right? Which means he's helping me. He's helping me. All right? But in order for him to take me higher, just like the paralytic, the paralytic had to submit to the four. The paralytic could have said, no, I'm independent. I'm going to do it all on my own. Come on. Right? We all have some independency in us. Right? I'm not pointing at you. Are you sure? Yes. I'm remembering. A time. Long ago. When I was... Mr. Independent. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. you look at yourself. I am. <laughs> and I can do this all on my own. And I got this big jackhammer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? I remember. And it's this massive thing. And I'm trying to drill a six inch hole through. Through 12 inches of concrete uh-huh. in the basement of our all house. By all by myself. In your house. Right? And I could have done it by myself. <laughs> <laughs> it would have taken me a long time. But Allison, in her loving nature, <laughs> took it upon Help herself. Me. Help me. Right? Help me. Loving nature. I, I, I'm being encouraging. <laughs> Right, let me let me let me finish. Okay, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to be encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and 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 so there I am. I got this big jackhammer, you know, and I'm plugging away. I've been plugging away probably for an hour. And I probably only got I probably only got about two inches through, right? And I mean this sucker was heavy, right? And and it's drilling through and it's going through rebar, I'm sweating, it's hot. Anyway. All of a sudden, as I'm as I'm doing this, I look up, I stop for a minute, take a little rest, and there's this car driving down the road. Mm. And Allison comes out, well, I called somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's okay, I can, I can do it myself. It's okay. <coughs> no, you need help. No, but right? usually he wants me to help. And I'm not oh. always the person that's supposed to be the one to help. <laughs> I'm not made for some of that stuff. <laughs> so, so this guy comes and you know from the church and he helps me and we get it all done. Yeah, right. But how many know? You know, I know for myself, yeah. we like to do things independent. Yes. Yeah. Right? Is, is there anybody that, that that resonates with that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Can I right. Tell a right. And 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 so so, but that that weight that I had, it was heavy, mm-hmm. right? And, and I would have been there for hours yeah. trying to get through this because, you know, I'd never drilled through something like that before. Yeah. Never done this before in my life, right? And so I just rented this jackhammer, this big thing, and I'm drilling, right? You know, this, you know, and, uh, you know, but I, I, I didn't realize that it's not like every other drill. Mm. You can only drill so far and then you got a chisel. <laughs> Oh, so what did the guy do? And bang. So so he helped, he, you know, he took a turn, right? And then and then and I, I rested and then I took a turn and we got so far in and then we just each took a you know, took a chisel and you know, broke away and then we were able to drill more. Right? And so we got all the way through. I mean it's twelve inches of concrete. Right? I was putting in a uh, in a in a wood uh, pellet stove and so I needed to get six inches in. Mm-hmm. And uh, and anyway, so so somebody came and helped. Mm. Right? See, I, I share that because I want you to see that that Jesus wants to be the one that carries your load. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So he wants mm-hmm. to carry my load. Yeah. Pastor, was it? Were you drilling through a floor or through a wall? Were you drilling through a wall? A wall? Drilling through a wall. Dude. Exactly. Yeah, well, so it wasn't a jackhammer, it was a big drill. It was a oh, hammer. Okay. Okay. A big hammer. Well, have, yeah, no loose fittings after that. You would need the dentists, they're all gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Oh, I, afterwards, oh, I felt it afterwards. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but but see, he wants to carry your load. And so submission mm-hmm. is key. Yes. Say submission, submission. is key. Yes. All right? 
So the first dimension is submitting ourselves to being yoked. You know, James chapter 4 says, submit yourself to God. In other words, without submission to God, we will not be able to resist. Right? But when I submit, there's no resistance to the enemy. Right? Because who's doing the resisting? Jesus. Jesus is now working on my behalf. You know, and, and for far too long, we the church have tried to, why well, rebuke you, devil, yeah. and, and all this sort of stuff, instead of recognizing, no, that's not what God called you to do. He called you to submit to Him, and in the submission to Him, you'll have the ability, why? Because you're yoked to Him, and now God begins to fight for you. Right? We're all trying to fight ourselves. Right? How many get tired and weary? Yeah. Right? Of fighting, right? And, 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 and God says, listen, if you would just submit, I'll carry the load. You don't have to battle it out. I'll carry it, and I'll be the one that will cause the enemy to flee. Because you can't resist the devil on your own. You can't. I was, I had, I, it's just about six months before, I think six months, seven months before we started pastoring. I was in Africa and, uh, and I, I'm sitting in the airport of Nairobi, uh, the Nairobi airport. I'm sitting there and, uh, and, and there's some people sitting next to me and I get talking to this guy. And, and, and this guy, turns out he's a believer, turns out he was a pastor and now he's ministering to pastors. Right, that's, that was his role. He had just finished a conference with um, like hundreds and hundreds of pastors, and his whole ministry was focused on 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 on, on pastors and how to prevent them from from submitting to temptation. Mm. That was his whole ministry. Mm. And and so I'm sitting there talking to him, having a great conversation with him, and 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 he and he starts to tell me. He says, you know, starts to share the whole story. And he talks about, he says, okay, let me, let me just kind of paint a picture for you. And he lit, gives me two, two pastors that, that had fallen, right? One was sexual sin and one was uh, um, uh, greed, you know, money. And, and he said, okay. And he said this, he asked me this question. Can that happen to you? <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> and he said, it already has. Yeah. Yeah. And I sat there and I was like, what do you mean? Yeah. Right? And he said, the reason why it already has mm -hmm. is because you can't determine what you're going to be tempted yeah, with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know how much temptation you're going to get on that mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. You don't know the temptation that they had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what you can do is prepare mm -hmm. so that when temptation shows up, you're going to submit to God yeah, yeah. and resist, yes, yeah. right? And he started to tell me a bunch of different things. And, and, and that, that, that has stayed with me yes. all these years, for 20 years. That was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. It'll all be 20 years in January of next year. So in 20 years, that has, you know, every time, you know, a challenge comes, a, 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 a temptation comes, because mm -hmm. you can't stop temptation from coming. And if we think we can, we're in pride. Right? The devil has the ability to tempt you. Just as he did with Jesus. And you don't know when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen, and how much pressure is going to be there. Right? But what you can do is say, Lord, I'm going to submit to you. Help me. Carry my load. Carry my load. The reason why we get stressed out is because we're carrying our load. Let me, let me say that again. The reason why we live out of stress is because we're carrying our load. The reason why we live out of fear and anxiety is because we're carrying the load. How many can resonate? 
That's right. All of us. Right? I mean, you know, we all have different aspects, we have different weights that, that we're carrying. And God says, no, tonight, I want you to let it go and not pick it up again. As a matter of fact, I want you to let it go. And every time that, that, that thought comes, continually keep pushing it towards me. Keep pushing it towards me. Keep pushing it towards me. Because it's not yours to carry. Stay yoked. Stay submitted to me. All right? That's the first dimension. Submission is it, it's huge. The process of being yoked can be painful if we choose not to submit and become out of step with him. Okay? The only time being yoked is painful is when we choose to not submit and step out of step with him. The second dimension of being yoked is this. So if I submit to him, the second dimension of being yoked will be I need to follow his teaching and instruction. We know we're yoked when we obey. Yes. All right? There was a season in, 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 in Allison's life and my life when God had been speaking to us about, about leaving the church that we were at because he wanted us to go to this other one to get our next level of training before we got launched into ministry. And we began to do both. Mm. And God began to wake us up separately at different mo- times uh, uh, during that time period. And God would speak to us, partial obedience is disobedience. Mm. One foot in the boat and one foot on the dock. Yep. Yep. Right? And, and, and so once we made the decision... And we submitted. We were able to follow his instruction. And, 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 and we went through a lot. I mean, we, we, I got, I got, I got a, a strip torn up and down one side of me and, and you know, uh, by our, our, that pastor at the time. Who do you think you are? We hear from God more than you. You know, we've been pastors for so long. And so we know the voice of God. And, I, and, if, and if you're telling us this is what God's saying to you, then what you're saying is that we're wrong. Huh. I'm like, that's not what we said. We just came to them to honor them yes. and to thank them for when they had taken us. Mm. That was where, that's, that's where we went. And, and, but because of partial obedience, mm. we kind of got, I, I did, I got sucked into the same Mindset of the same spirit that was operating out of me. Mm. And so I began to lash back. Mm. Right? And, and, and so then I went and repented and, and, and uh, to them and said, listen, you know, I, you know, I didn't mean to be disrespectful and, and you know, I, forgive me for that and then walked away. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and, and so it was very painful mm. in one aspect because we had become very close to them become great friends with them, we've done a lot of things with them. And 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 but we knew that we knew that we knew that God was taking us on the journey. And there was a lot of things that had taken place. You know, there was a lot of um, um, things that happened and and uh, but but once we submitted mm-hmm. our kids lined right up. Mm. Right? When we were going back and forth, they were struggling. They didn't want to go. They, you know, remember, I mean, all that, all the stuff that we went through. But the moment we made our final decision mm. and, we, and we stepped forward, the yoke was lifted, or the, the weight was lifted. And now all of a sudden, we could walk in the freedom and our kids just, boom, mm. lined right up. And they were only, what? Mm-hmm. Three and five. Three and five. So, so, you know, God doesn't want you to carry a little I don't know, everybody, this is delicate maybe, but quitting an addiction is very much like that. Like, if you want to quit drinking, you can't really do that hanging out in the bar. Mm-hmm. And one of the big things in addictions is you lose all your friends. There's an old preppel dollar that said, if you want to get rid of somebody, you don't like them, 20 bucks, you'll never yep. see them again. Yep. It's a little bit like that. So there's a parallel there. Yep. It's like quitting cold turkey, but it's the lifestyle change that goes yep. with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know that. 
that the reason why we don't leave addictions is because they have become our friend. Mm -hmm. Amen. And until you break that friendship, mm -hmm. you'll never destroy that addiction. Mm -hmm. Right? And breaking that friendship can be many different ways, right? But, but see, I'm not called to carry a load. Right? He is. All right? So I got to be yoked. I got to submit. And in the submission, now I got to obey his teaching and his instructions. All right? In other words, when we obey his instructions, we will walk in peace and rest, full of life, and we'll have the ability to resist the devil. Third dimension of being yoked to Jesus is that if I'm submitted and, and obeying his teaching and instructions, uh, before I get to that, go to 1 John 5 so you can see this. Because the church and the religious realm has propagated 1 John chapter 5. has propagated that the laws of God or the instructions of God First Peter, or sorry, First John 5 are laborious, are burdensome. Mm. Look at this, First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. We keep His instructions, His teachings, and His instructions and teachings are not burdensome. All right? If God tells you to do something, it's not burdensome. It's life-giving. Now, I know where the religious problem of God is, but, but, but understand that when God says, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. Mm -hmm. He's doing that and he's saying, listen, if you'll recognize that I am your God, mm -hmm. you won't be burdened. Because I'll carry your burden. Other gods are the burdens that we're carrying. Let me say that again. Other gods can be the burdens that we're carrying. Because they begin to become the, the friends of our life. They become the, 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 the things that we go to, the, 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 the stresses. Why? Because we're putting it before God. And God says, listen, my yoke is easy. And my burden, look, I love this. My burden, is light. Why? Because he's carrying it. I'm just yoked to him. I'm not yoked to my burden. I'm yoked to him. And he's carrying the burden. Because he has all the strength. And all the power. And all the endurance to be able to do it. Alright? <coughs> so the third dimension of being yoked to Jesus. Flip over to James chapter 2. James chapter 2. And let's look at verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. In other words, if I'm truly yoked to Jesus, I'll walk in good works. I don't have to strive to do good works. I'm not doing the good works because I need salvation. I'm just doing the good works because I'm yoked to the one who wants to do good things. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God the Father anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
who went uh, to Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power. Who went to Bell doing good? Right? So, good works, faith and works coincide with my submission to his teaching and obedience of being yoked to him. I love this. Because the Bible says that Jesus went about doing good. What were, what were the works of Jesus? Right? The works of Jesus were manifesting the character and the nature and the authority of God. Destroying the works of the devil. Right? I mean, I mean, that should tell us that, that signs, wonders, and miracles still are for today. Right? No, they didn't pass when the last apostle died. They didn't pass when the Bible was written and put it into canon and scripture. No, they're still continuing, and he wants you to be a part of it. And if you and I will stay yoked to him, then we'll begin to function and allow the gifts of the Spirit and all that the good works that He wants accomplished in our life and through our life will automatically begin to follow because we've chosen just to submit to Him. I don't have to strive to get a word. I don't have to strive to get a prophetic utterance. I don't have to strive to lay hands on the sick. I don't have to strive for the working of miracles. I can just engage with the one who has all power and all strength and all endurance, and I can just live from him and allow him to flow through me. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. First, first, 1 Peter chapter 5. Are you good? Right, we're going to come to a closer. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. And seven. Therefore, humble yourselves under. Everybody say under. under. Right? Everybody say submission. submission. Right? Submit under the mighty hand of God. Submit under the face of the ox of God. Okay? Then look what it says. That he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your care. Listen to this. Cares are distractions, our grief, sorrow. Worry, anxieties, and burdens. For he cares for you. Now remember the parable of the sower. What happened to the third group of people? They heard the word. They endured for a while. And then the cares of the world. We have to get to a place where we don't care. <laughs> Let me say that again. We got to get to a place that we don't care. Now that's not a that's not a, 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 an obnoxious thing. That's following what the word says. For God cares for you. You don't have the strength and the endurance to carry it. He does. I care for you. How about that's a little bit different? But just because I care for you doesn't mean I can carry yes. your burden. Yes. Right? And you can't carry mine. Mm -hmm. Right? Because neither of us were designed to carry it. But he was. See, he was. All right? Are you good? We must continually, continually, Cast our care upon the Lord and stop taking it upon ourselves. He, he, he alone 
is the one who wants to carry your care and your burden. And when we do, we will live from the face of God and he will carry us to the place where we become free from paralysis. Last scripture, Psalm 55. Psalm 55. Say, I can help someone, but I can't carry the load. There's too many people in the church that want to be carried. So that the church has taken that scripture bearing one another burdens long. Yeah. It doesn't mean to carry them, it means to be concerned for them right. and to um, come and you, alongside of them. Yeah. And you lift it up to God. Yeah. Right? You lift them up to God. God, you you have the strength and the endurance to carry me. I don't. I can't. I, I can't carry all your burdens as a pastor. I can't even carry my own. <laughs> right? Because they weren't designed for us to carry. Right? But what I can do is if you if you share your burden with me, I can say to you, okay, let's give it to the Lord. Right? Let, let, let's release it to the Lord. I can, I can give you advice. I can counsel you. I can you know, bring direction in your life. But, but I can't carry it. And you can't carry it. we got to give it to God. Because God wants to carry it for you. Because he wants you to stay yoked to him. And not endure it yourself. Right? And so we endure together. Why? Because watch this. If you and I are. If you're yoked to him and I'm yoked to him, then we're yoked together. Right? Yeah. Right? We're all yoked together. Yes. Right? See, see, Mark is yoked to me and I'm yoked to him because we're yoked to Jesus. In other words, there's this, de- there's this interdependency that takes place when you and I begin to release our burdens to the Lord. Now, the Lord's carrying the burden and all we're doing is just Yoking ourselves with each other and allowing the Lord to carry the burden so that we don't get worn out, we don't get weary, we don't get tired, we don't get exhausted and stressed out and anxiety and and, and full of all kinds of junk that we were never designed to carry. Right? Because if I'm in Christ and you're in Christ, then we're all yoked together. Right? Yes, we're seeking to... For a while, mm-hmm. yep. till God gives us His downloads, yep. right? Yep. Of strength. Yep. So, 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 watch this kind of picture here. If I submit to God and begin to give Him and and, and give Him every weight, mm-hmm. what happens? I become lighter and lighter, mm-hmm. which means now I can step into greater things. Right? So now I can begin to intercede. What? Not just for my issues. I can begin to help intercede for somebody else's burden. Why? Because my burden, I'm under, operating under his burden as being light. And so now all of a sudden, it's not like I'm being poured out and stressed about, oh man, you know, this person, the weight that they've just given to me is so much. No, no. You've learned how to give your own. Now you can learn how to give the ones that come upon you that or try to come upon you. You can give it unto him and say, Lord, I... I can't carry this, but you can. Yeah. 
And I'm going to begin to intercede and pray and believe. And, and, you know, that could be for family members. That can be for friends. That can be for people within the body. That we can be, begin to turn those things and give them to God for Him to carry. It doesn't mean we don't pray. It doesn't mean we don't engage. It doesn't mean we don't, you know, help others and all that sort of stuff. But the heavy weight of the burden is carried by the Lord, not by you. Okay? So you don't have to get stressed. Oh man, it's just so heavy. You know, let the let God give you the grace to function. Let God be God. Right? Let Him give you the grace. Psalm 55, verse 22. Look at this. Cast your burden. On the Lord. And he shall what? Sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. This verse is actually a command of the Lord. It's not just, oh no, just you know, when you have a chance, cast your burden on the Lord. No, this is a command of the Lord. Say, it's a command of the Lord. Right? See, the problem is, is we see commands as negative. This command is so positive. Why? Because if you and I will cast our burdens on the Lord, it says, He shall sustain you. God can't lie. Exactly. Well, I do not say I get myself into trouble. But I like the next verse because I find that very comforting as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. But you, O God, that one, shall bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty, deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in you. That one. Mm-hmm. Right? Very good. Now watch this. The word cast, listen, this is amazing. The word cast here is a picture of a flower being blown away from its plant by the wind. You have no idea where it's going. Okay? Now, right? Now watch this. Okay? Who's the wind? In essence, what this passage is saying is, is expose yourself to the Holy Ghost. And let the wind of his spirit blow your burdens away. Say it again. Yep. In essence, what it's saying is expose yourself to the Holy Spirit and let the wind. Of the Holy Ghost. Blow your burdens away from you. So there's a part we play that we gotta submit. Everybody say submit. 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 Right? And then we gotta engage with him. Right? And 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 as 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 Peter tells us that we're to uh or sorry, Hebrews, Paul tells us in Hebrews to push it aside, right? To, to let go and, and, and push it aside, lay it aside. And as we lay it aside and we're pushing it away, it's, it's like the Holy Spirit is blowing it through His breath away from you. Mm. Right? This means we need to become intimate with the Holy Ghost and not intimate with our burdens. That's the challenge right there. Is too much of our of our time has become intimate with the burden. And it's become a part of us. And he's saying, if you become intimate with me, the Holy Ghost will blow on it. And you'll no longer have to carry it. Now watch this. It goes on and says, God will sustain you. Listen to this. 
The word sustain. Listen to what it means. God will abide. He'll maintain. He'll bear it. He'll feed you. He'll guide you. He'll hold you. He'll nourish you. And he'll provide for you. <laughs> he'll abide with you. He'll maintain you. He'll bear it up. He'll feed you. He'll guide you. He'll hold you. He'll nourish you. And he'll provide for you. Remember, it says that, 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 remember, God is love. And it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he says that love bears all things. Love bears all things. He wants to bear your burden. Why? Because he loves you. Right? And then as he bears it, he's going to sustain you. He's going to feed you. He's going to guide you. He's going to abide with you. He's going to hold you. He's going to nourish you. He's going to hold you like, 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 like you're being hugged by him. He's going to, he's going to hold you like you're being, you know, that tender hug of, 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 of Almighty God. The tender love of the Father is going to begin to hold you and sustain you into a dimension that you've never lived out of before because you've been carrying your burdens for far too long. And he says, now I want to hold you. I want to hold you, and in the midst of holding, I'm going to feed you, I'm going to love you, I'm going to bear all your burdens. And then, look at what he, see, the great thing, he, he doesn't just want to feed you, he just doesn't want to nourish you and guide you. Look at what the next part of the verse says. He shall. Okay, does it say he may? No. Right? Does it say, oh, you know, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't feel like it today. Right? No, no, no. Listen. It says he shall. He is bound by his word that when we cast our burden, he'll not only sustain us and nourish us and hold us. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. The reason why we're moved is because we haven't cast our burden on him. I don't want to be moved anymore. How about you? Right? Now listen, listen to this word moved. This, this, this just amazed me when I saw this. This word moved means he will never permit the righteous. See, that's me. Right? That's us. That's born again believers, right? He will not permit the born again believer to fall down and collapse under the burden. Or allow the burden to kill you off. Which means... He won't allow the burden to kill your joy. He won't allow the burden to kill your peace. He won't allow the burden to kill what he has placed on the inside of you and on the inside of me. He doesn't want your joy to be killed. He doesn't want your peace to be killed. He doesn't want your lack, to, uh, you know, he doesn't want your, uh, all the things that he's given us, the grace to be killed. He doesn't want any of that to be killed. And so he's going to sustain you to the place where he's going to hold you so that you do not fall down and are not killed by what just took place in your burden. He shall not permit. Lord, I thank you tonight that we're going to cast our burdens upon you. So let's stand. Let's stand together. And whatever weight you're carrying tonight, whatever, whatever burden you're carrying tonight, whatever toil you have been functioning in whatever, you know, and that, that could be the, 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 the burden of your family member. It could be a burden of a, of a family member's sickness or disease or, 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 or situation, whatever it is, it's not yours to carry. And so God says tonight, everybody say tonight, right? And he wants you to cast 
your burden. He wants you to, to, to allow the Holy Ghost to blow on the burden far away from you. So Lord, tonight, come like a mighty wind and blow the burden of our life. We permit you, Lord. We permit you, Lord, to blow the burden, to blow it out of our life. We, we, we lay it aside, Lord. We lay it aside. And Lord God, we push. We push by the breath of the Holy Ghost. That burden aside right now. We thank you for the face of the ox. We thank you, Lord, that the ox is the burden bearer and the burden lifter. The one who has all strength and the one who has all endurance. And so we thank you that you're lifting us up. Just as you said, that when we humble ourselves, that you will raise us up and exalt us in due time. So Lord, I thank you tonight that you're raising us up into a deeper place in you, a deeper place into your face where we begin to see from a whole new perspective and we begin to engage with your strength, with your endurance. For as it says in Nehemiah 8, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy. The word joy there means to be joined. So the joining of ourselves to the Lord in submission and yoking ourselves to His yoke. There is a strength that's going to come upon you tonight and as the days move forward. If you'll continually keep that weight laid aside. He'll come and sustain you. He'll hold you up. So Father, we thank you that you're holding us up. You're feeding us. You're guiding us in the midst of this. And thank you, Lord, for the supernatural activity that's, being, that's even taking place right now in the Spirit. Where burdens are being lifted. We're being yoked to a new dimension of you. And we're going to not only submit, we're going to follow what you say. We're going to do what you tell us to do. Be obedient. And there'll be a manifestation of your nature, your character, and your authority. By faith. Throughout our life. For your glory, for your honor. In the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.